Greetings and welcome to this mini lecture on semiology and popular culture. In this mini lecture we're just going to take a look at what semiology is and just to start to get a sense of how or why we might use it or think about it when talking about popular culture. So semiology sounds like a big loaded term but really what it is is just the studies of signs uh, usually within a particular culture and that's an important piece is because signs are very contextual they are very oriented towards culture uh, we don't have a lot of universal signs a lot of signs that we have are related to culture there are some signs we've attempted to make universal such as the stop sign because we find that's useful to have that but they, it's important to realize that these are still largely cultural signs. So one thing that we deal with with signs is that whenever we see some kind of sign, uh, there's something to delineate between the denotation and the connotation. Denotation is this idea of uh, exact, you know, the, the the full definition, and connotation is the implied definition or the implied meaning, right? So if somebody says um, you don't look good in that dress. The denotation should be, okay, I don't look good. The connotation might be, oh, you look ugly, right? So it's that, it, the connotation is what we re really try to look at and understand because there's, there's a lot of subtext in how we communicate. So semiology is quite interested in connotations. Um, it, it really important thing to note here is that as I said, signs aren't necessarily universal, but signs are universally used. And I think that's important. That that hits upon, you know, within humans, a lot of miscommunication of what we say versus what we mean and how others interpret that. Well, within popular culture, it's important to understand that signs are regularly used throughout and they can mean different things. This is why you can have 15 different takes or interpretations on a specific artifact of popular culture. Uh, in that one thing that, that we see here is that the material world is not just given, but it's made intelligible. It's made comprehen comprehensible through signs. Um, that is, in order for us to know what a book is, in order for us to know what a table is, in order for us to know what a cow is, uh, those are made comprehensible. Those are made, given meaning through signs. So a cow in our culture typically means milk, ice cream, and hamburgers. But to somebody of, of Hindi culture, it means something profoundly different. Similar with a book, um, how we make sense of it, how we're even able to access it, is only made sense through signs. So keep this in mind is that even when we're walking around in our world, everything surrounding us, there are all, there's all things that they're signifying. Uh, there's all, so all sorts of signs surrounding us that tell us information, both in a denotative way and a connotative way. And that within pop culture, among pop culture scholars, the cultural systems of meaning are never innocent. Um, there's this idea that there is purpose, intention, or there is ways in which of, of reading things that tell us exactly how or why or distance ourselves. You know, a good example, going back to cow, you know, notice that we don't have cow meat. We have hamburgers, we have steak, we have, you know, a variety of different ways of talking about cow meat. So there is a cultural system that isn't entirely innocent. Nobody wants people or, or people that sell or produce cows does not want people to associate that animal, which when you actually meet a cow is, you know, they're, they are gentle creatures. They have these big brown eyes. They're very easy to, you know, feel compassion for. Well, people who, who profit off of cow meat don't want us to think about that. So instead of having cow meat, we have hamburgers and we have, you know, steaks and, and these types of things. We have ribs, but we never really have that discussion of what it is we're eating. So there is a there's a cultural system in which the meaning is purposely subverted, um, and that always the connected, you know, the the uh, that signs or, or signs and symbols are always connected to sign systems, um, such as language, religion, education. That in order to make sense of any sign we encounter, they're often connected to this larger um, system of signs. 
So typically when we look at something, and again this can be anything, and we'll look at a few examples here, we have the sign, which is what's the, the signification. Um, this is the whole meaning, the big concept. So I'm going to use a you know rather amusing example here, and I'm going to say the finger, right? When somebody gives you the finger, that is the whole, you know, that is the sign. Now there's the signifier, which is the form, what form it takes. And in our culture, that's the middle finger. And then there's the what's being signified with it. That is the meaning and concept. So in order to get the sign, you have to work with, or you you see this blending of the signifier and the signified. That is the, the form, uh, the, the thing being, you know, the thing that's there, and then the thing that it's supposed to be representing, or the concept it's, that it's representing. There's another level of signs that we need to talk about, and this is, this is in relation to that, you know, sign system that I was talking about in the previous slide, and that is, there is, the, there's, when we look at sign systems, there's this other element that we call myth. Um, and this is kind of a second order sign system or semiological system. And the idea behind myth is that even when we have signs, signifier, signified, there's this other thing that all of this falls under or all of this is part of. It's part of our cultural mythology. It's part of a, you know, the ways in which we form who we are. Um, and it's important that this is kind of underneath or superimposed on that initial system. So in the case of you know, this sign signify or signified of, of the middle finger, um, all of it is, you know, you could say the mythology, actually, you know, a very interesting way of, of exploring this mythology is that to be sexually violent to somebody is to show dominance. And that would actually work within a patriarchal system. Right? Because when you say to somebody "f you," right, you're using the word to that the same word that we you know we use in relation to sex. So you're exposing or you're pushing upon somebody else a sexually a sexual act to show you are not intimidated or to to blow off somebody. Uh, so that would be what we would look at if we're talking about the myth that also goes within uh, semiological systems. So here's a good example, or here's another example. The flag, right? So the sign, of course, would be the American flag. The signifier would be the actual flag itself, right? So the flag is the item. The sign is that it's the American flag. And what's being signified? The United States. If we were to go with myth, really what that's supposed to, the big picture that that, that flag is supposed to represent is, of course, freedom and individual, the individual or individual uh, individuality. Here's another great example, the Nike swoosh, right? So the sign is the Nike logo. The signifier is the swoosh. The signify, what's being, what's being signified is, of course, Nike. And the mythology is empowerment, right? If we think about different slogans from Nike, it's always about, you know, your ability to do things. So one thing to notice is that when we talk about that element of mythology is that the relationship is made explicit to a point that it's almost natural right so if we say to people you know what does the flag represent people will say freedom right they'll buy they'll sometimes even bypass the fact that it's just a way of representing the united states and say no it represents freedom so that's one of the things is that that relationship is often often seems natural there's almost it's hard to not make that connection that's what we talk about when we talk about mythology within a sign system so we see we see the myth as true we don't question it. it's just part of our means of communication right nobody nobody or, or it's hard to argue within our culture that the flag doesn't mean freedom think about other examples, and one of the ones I like to do, is, one of the, the examples I like to, to identify is, you know, when we say, oh, he drives a hybrid, right? There, there's an interesting mythology, there's, there's an interesting range of symbols that that invokes. If somebody drives a hybrid car, there are all of a sudden certain connotations that that implies. There's a whole system of, you know, things that that seems to represent. The expectations of who this person is, who this male is, um, 
is influenced by that idea or it's symbolized you know by driving a hybrid that symbolizes something about this person as a as a man all right so those are my examples i hope these start to kind of give you some ideas about uh, sign, signs and semiology and how we might look at that as we delve into popular culture. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.